Good morning, boys and girls, and good morning in your classrooms. We're so glad you're joining us today for chapel. Would you stand up? I have some great music for you today. We won't fear the battle. We won't fear the night. A strong and mighty fortress Raise your voice now No love is greater Who can stand against us If our God is for us Even when I stumble Even when I fall Even when I turn back Still your love is sure strong and mighty fortress raise your voice now no love is greater who can stand against us if our god is for us neither height nor depth can separate us hell and death will Can 
I love it so much. And we're moving on to another one of my favorites. That was our very first song of the month. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me. His love for me, who the sun sets free, always oh, free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. Who the sun sets free, always oh, free indeed. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my singing going on in here. I know in your classrooms you may not have been able to hear it, but it was really good, especially Miss Stolnicker's class. It's really awesome. We are going to end our singing portion today with Let It Bring You Praise. Lord, you create me perfectly shaping me I know my heart is safe in your arms Lord you know everything so when I feel afraid I put 
put my faith in you this life is yours to give so with each new day let every breath that i take let it bring you praise bring you so much. Would you take a seat, please? All right. Good morning, guys. Did you not have your coffee today? Good morning, guys. You did have your coffee today. It's so good to worship with you, and um, it's so good to be together. I know I've talked with several of the teachers. It's been a while since this group has actually been in the auditorium with us for chapel, and um, so I love I love the chance to worship with you all and see classes. Can't wait to worship with you guys in here next week, and I love each each chance we have to worship together. Really quick, let's do a. Um, a quick review and um, see our chapel our chapel theme this month is what a child of God is chosen everybody say that a child of God is chosen and who was the person in the Bible we talked about Samuel and when Samuel heard God's voice what did he say oh Harper Grace you know it I can tell from your hand Speak, for your servant is listening. Once he knew it was God speaking, he wanted to uh, make sure he heard from the Lord. And guys, we should be that same way. Now, I'm excited about chapel this morning. I'm excited to introduce our speaker, because our speaker is actually somebody who's in chapel with us every single week. It's not me, though. It's not Mrs. Harrison. Today, our chapel speaker is Mr. Hammond. Normally, we don't see him because he sits up there helping make sure the videos go into your classroom and make sure the sound works okay and make sure the projector is working okay. Um, and so we love the way that he serves us in chapel every week and love that this week we get to hear from him. Guys, he loves the Lord so much and, and wants to serve him. Um, and so I love the chance that he has to be in front of you and not just serving behind the scenes and just sharing what God's been putting on his heart and what God's been teaching him this week. So before he comes, can will you all pray with me as we pray for him? God, I thank you so much for chapel today. I thank you for the chance we have to hear from you. And God, I pray that you will use Mr. Hammond's words just to speak to our hearts and speak to our, um, 
minds just to help us understand more what it means to be your chosen child. And Lord, that you will um, help us to, to listen for your voice and that we will be like Samuel and we will say, speak for your servant is listening. So God, I just thank you again for this time we have together and we commit it to you. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Everybody in their classroom doing well, too? Are you in your classroom? Hey, you guys in the classroom, I hope that next week, that when you get to come in here, some of you, that you'll sing like these kids did, because this reminded me of when we were all here. You guys sang great today, and I'm looking forward to the rest of you getting back in here and continuing to sing. I think it's just we're finally getting used to it. We're getting used to how many can be in here, and we're singing. So, But I'm excited to be here in front of you today. Um, can I tell you that I still get nervous? I'm 50 years old and I still get nervous. People don't recognize it because um, when we have sports, I do a lot of announcing, but I get nervous to announce a football game just because I think it's the, one of the coolest things to be able to do is to get in front of kids and talk and in front of people and talk with the gifts that God has given to me. Well, before we get into our lesson today, we're going to have a little activity. I don't want to call it a game because we're in the chapel, so I don't want us to go crazy this morning, but I do want to have an activity with you. Can anybody tell me what that says on the screen? Go ahead, everybody. Say it. Follow my instructions. In the classroom, you can't see it, and there's a reason for that because it's really it's an audio instructions thing, so you guys don't need to see in the classroom what it says, but it says, follow my instructions. It's kind of like Simon Says, but I'm not going to say Simon Says. I'm going to tell you the instructions, and every now and then you might hear another voice telling you instructions, and I want you to only follow my voice when I give you the instructions. Do you understand? Whose voice are you going to listen to? Mr. Hammonds. That's me. That's right. Okay. So when I give the instructions, remember, I'm not going to say Simon says. I'm not going to say Mr. Hammond says. The other voice is not going to say, this is not Mr. Hammond's voice. Don't do it. Okay? You're just listening for my voice. Some of you know my voice really well because you've, you've listened to me, you've been to ball games, you've been here for a while, but some of you may not know my voice really well. That's why I'm talking a lot. Now you know my voice, right? Okay, here we go. I've got 10 instructions, 10 things that you're going to hear. Some of them you're going to be doing, and some of them you're not going to be doing. Which ones are you going to be doing? My voice, right? Not the other voice. All right, here we go. Stand up in front of your chair. Put your hand on your head. Clap your hand three times. Touch the ground with your left hand. Touch the ground with your left hand. Good job. Somebody in here said no. Good job. All right, here we go. Cross your arms in front of you. Wave to your teacher. Jump three times. All right, all right, all right. How about? Touch your nose with your left hand. Are you sure? All right. Turn around one time and sit back down in your chair. Great job. Now, because some of you don't know my voice real well, I tried to make it kind of obvious, all right? That was a foreign computer lady's voice, so you knew it wasn't me. But what if it was a voice that sounded like mine? Then you would need to, okay, shh. Then you would need to know my voice better, wouldn't you? You would need to listen to me, and we would need to spend some time together. Well, today I want to talk to you about some people that Jesus chose who got to spend some time with him. We're going to talk about people that followed Jesus. Do you know what a person who follows Jesus is called? Right here. A disciple, that's exactly right. So we're going to talk about Jesus choosing the original 12 disciples that were called apostles. A disciple is a follower. So a disciple of Jesus is a Christian, a Christ follower. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 20, it says this, While walking by the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw two brothers, 
Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Some of you know this. That's good. Immediately, the Bible says, they left their nets and followed him. Jesus said to Simon Peter and his brother Andrew, follow me. And what did the Bible say? When did they follow him? In the back? Yes. When did they follow him? How long did it take? The Bible said that they followed him. Everyone? Immediately. They immediately followed Jesus. I love this picture. They were in the boat. Jesus is on the, on the beach. And he says, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. They jumped out of the boat. And they followed him. But that was just the first two. The next two did the same thing. And I'm going to read that for you. Matthew 4, 21 and 22 says, those are the next two verses. And going on from there, Jesus saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with Zebedee, their father. They were mending their nets. And he called them. And the Bible says, immediately they left their boat and their father and followed him. Jesus called two more brothers, James and John. And they both, the Bible says, they were also fishermen, and they immediately left their boat and their father, and they followed him. So we've got four guys so far. We're only going to learn about five of them, and then we're going to name all 12 of them. We're going to jump over to Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. In these days, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. And when day came, he called his disciples and chose from them, I'm sorry, I forgot this one. We missed Matthew, didn't we? Let's go back up to Luke 5, 27 and 28. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi, whose name was changed to Matthew, so we're going to call him Matthew, sitting in his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him, and Matthew got up, left everything, and followed him. The Bible says that Matthew got up from his tax booth where he was collecting people's taxes. Do you know what taxes are? Money. And so Matthew was in that tax booth collecting taxes and getting rich. And the people really didn't like him very much. But Jesus loved him. And Jesus chose him to be one of his disciples. And when Jesus said to Matthew, follow me, what does the Bible say? Matthew left everything and followed Jesus. Then Luke 6, 12 to 16. In these days, Jesus went out to the mountain to pray. All night he continued in prayer, and when day came, here, oops, stop hitting the button. There we go. He called his disciples and chose from them twelve whom he named apostles, and these were their names. Simon, whom he called Peter, Andrew his brother, and James and John, and Philip, and Bartholomew, and Matthew, and Thomas, and James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon who was called the Zealot, and Judas the son of James, and Judas Iscariot who became a traitor. Jesus chose twelve men to be his original disciples while he was on earth. He knew them all by name, and they followed him. The Bible says that these 12 men spent three and a half years with Jesus, getting to know his voice. Because if you're really going to follow somebody, how do you have to, what do you have to know? You have to know their voice. Just like in the directions when we gave earlier, you need to know the voice that you're trying to follow. God knows you by name. If you believe in Jesus... And trust him as your savior. The Bible says that he is your shepherd and he knows all of his sheep by name. There we go. John 10, verses 3 and 4 say, The sheep hear the shepherd's voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When the shepherd has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. So Jesus knows your name because he's your shepherd. When you place your trust in Jesus, you become a child of God, and we're learning that a child of God is what? Chosen, just like the original 12 apostles were chosen. Well, God's still in the business of choosing those who believe on him. So Mrs. Cox and I had a great conversation. I have lots of great conversations with Mrs. Cox. But we were talking yesterday, and when we shared this, um, did you know, this is going to be a shocker, did you know that the Bible is actually right? Can somebody say, duh, Mr. Hammond? Thank you, because we know that the Word of God is absolutely what? Starts with a capital T. True. Always true. So, of course, the Bible is right. But guess what? It's not just right when it talks about God creating things. 
it's not just right when it talks about how we're a sinner and need a Savior. It's right when it says that sheep know the shepherd's voice. We had a conversation yesterday, and she said she has seen videos. So I looked up some videos last night. I'm not going to show you right now. We don't have time for that. But there are people that actually go out, and they've probably read this verse, and they want to test it out. So they go out, and they go up to the shepherd, and they say, how do you call the sheep? And the shepherd gives them the exact words. And so three different, the video that I saw, three different people try it in, in their language, in the sheep's language. They say, come on, sheep, come on, sheep. And guess what the sheep keep on doing with the grass? They keep eating it with their head down. Three different people try it. Not one sheep budged. The farmer, they call it, the shepherd, he goes out and says the exact same thing. Come on, sheep. Come on, sheep. And one by one, the sheep start looking up. And then in the back, you see four or five of them start running towards the shepherd. And all of them run towards him. Those sheep know their shepherd's voice. And see, the Bible says when we become God's children, we're his sheep is another word for it. He's not just our Savior and our Lord. He's our shepherd, and he wants us to know his voice. He knows us by name. He's chosen us. We are his children, and he wants us to know his voice. That reminded me of another story, and I got to tell Mrs. Cox yesterday, and I get to tell you now because this is kind of exciting because this story is about one of your moms. I used to coach different sports. And one year, just a few years ago, I was coaching girls volleyball. And where's Leland? Leland, is this you right here? Leland over here, Miss Doniker's class. And out there somewhere is Kerrigan in Mrs. Hughes' class. Well, your mom, I'm just going to call her Miss Shannon, because that's how I knew her. She was Shannon. She was on my volleyball team. And at the end of the year, we were pretty good. We had a lot of fun and a lot of, um, there was a lot of school spirit in that class and, and a lot of people came out to the game. And that's important because at the end of the year, Shannon came up to me and she said, Coach, she said, there's something about your voice. She said, it didn't matter how many people were in the stands, how many people were yelling and screaming or calling for me and tell me to do something. If you gave me an instruction, I could hear your voice through everybody else. And I knew that's what I needed to do. And I thought, wow, how humbling is that? Because that's how I want to be with God, right? There's a lot of voices. All you got to do is turn the TV on one time. And there's a lot of voices saying, you need this car, you need that, you need this food, you need... And God's saying, you need me. And this is how you get more of me. How do we learn God's voice? How do you think we learn God's voice? Back in the back, young man. By praying to him? Okay. That's how he will hear our voice. How do we, hear, how do we learn more about God's voice? How do we listen to God? That's great. It's exactly what we want to do. We want to listen to God. How do we listen to God? Okay. In the back? Is that Harper Grace? I see those eyes. Harper Grace, how do we hear God's voice? Listen to his word. Where do we find God's word? In the Bible, exactly right. All these answers are great. Because when you spend time in prayer, what should you be doing? You should be praying and talking to God. But how, should you, how do you know how to talk to God? You read the Bible, and you listen to his voice, and God tells you how to pray. The Bible even says that when we don't know how to pray, the Holy Spirit prays on our behalf. Because God knows our needs better than we do. All right, go ahead and put your hands down. But this is so important. We need to know God's voice because there's so many voices out there. The way that we know God's voice is by reading and studying God's word. Um, Pledge to the Bible has something about that, right? I have hidden. Wait, is that in there? Pledge leads to the Bible. God's oh nope, there's land to my feet, land to my path. There's another one. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not what sin against God. All right. Why do we hide God's word in our heart? so we won't sin against him. We hide God's word in our hearts so we'll know his voice. Because, listen, just like Shannon, if one of those people was from the other side telling her to drop the ball, and she listened to that voice instead of Coach Hammond's voice that said, pick the ball up or hit the ball over the net, which one would have been the wrong thing to do? This one, right? 
the other person. But because she knew my voice, now I think I said something hopefully better than just hit it over the net, but she listened to her coach. God wants us to listen to him. Jesus is still calling people to be his disciples. Matthew 28, 19. Jesus is talking to his disciples, and he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. After Jesus had died on the cross for our sins, and he rose again, rose back to life, he didn't stay dead. He gave his first disciples this command. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations. So, yes, Jesus chose the original 12 disciples and called them apostles. But then he told those disciples to go out and make more disciples. Guess who those more disciples are part of? You and me. If we believe in Jesus, then we're part of those disciples that are now the more disciples that Jesus told his disciples to make. And then we're supposed to go make more disciples, too, because we're now followers of Jesus. Jesus wants to choose you to be a child of God because children of God are chosen to follow him. Let's go back and let's recap just a little bit. Remember Peter and Andrew and James and John? How did they follow Jesus, those first four? What, did the, what was the one word the Bible said? When did they follow? Immediately. Remember that picture right there? They immediately followed Jesus. Jesus. And that's the picture that I'm going to leave up there even as we go ahead and finish this out because I want you to remember that those three guys there in that picture, they represent those first four guys that left everything and they just ran after Jesus and they followed him immediately. And then after those four guys, we went to Matthew, right? And, and Matthew got up from his tax booth and left how much of his stuff? He left everything. He left all of it. Because he realized what was more important than all of his stuff. God, Jesus, following Jesus is more important than all of the stuff, all that money that he was collecting. It's more important than anything. That's exactly right. So Matthew got up from his tax booth, left everything to follow Jesus. Jesus' disciples knew that being chosen by Jesus to follow him is the best choice ever. So they followed him right away. Remember how you listened for my voice at the beginning when we were following instructions? God's voice is in the Bible. We need to listen to his voice and become his followers, become his disciples. A child of God is chosen. And that's what we want for you. That's what Jesus wants for you. That's what your teachers want from you. If you don't understand or if you have questions, ask your teacher. Ask Mrs. Cox. Ask me. We would love to talk to you. Because you know what? God loves us, and he showed us how to love you, and so we just want to love you. We want you to all be a child of God who is chosen to be his follower. Would you pray with me? Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you so much for Jesus. I thank you that you loved the world so much that you gave your one and only son that whoever believes in you should not perish or not have eternal death, but will have eternal life just by believing in you. God, thank you that you've chosen us to be your disciples, that you've chosen those who believe in you to be your followers. Lord, I pray for every boy and girl that's in here, everyone who's listening in their classrooms, everyone who's listening online, that they would be a true disciple of Jesus, seeking to learn and know your voice and follow your voice more than any others, understanding just like those first five disciples that we read about, that being chosen by God, Following Jesus is the best choice we could ever make. Bless our day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for coming to chapel today. Thanks for watching online. Hope you guys have a great day, all right? You're dismissed. Follow your teachers. I hope you know their voice. <laughs>